Good morning, everyone. We are so glad that you're here to worship with us on this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, it's a beautiful day outside, clear skies, cool air. I think I should have worn my sunglasses, though, with the light coming in from up there. <laughs> it's a little bright where I'm standing, but I'm glad that you're here. It's good to be back with you after being gone for two weeks. I, I'm glad that Bob was here the last couple weeks to, to lead and worship and bring the word. And we are glad, uh, I'm glad to be back after a good vacation, a good time away. Let us open in a word of prayer, and we will um, enter into a time of worship together. Gracious God, thank you for today. We give you praise and thanks for all your blessings, all the things that you have done for us, the way in which you uphold us, provide for us in ways that are are beyond our understanding in most cases. In the big and the small things, Lord, we know that you bless us and care for us. Lord, open our hearts today. Open our hearts this morning to your word, uh, your spirit that moves uh, within us and around us. Open our minds to hear your word, to grow closer to you, and to be more obedient in our daily life. And we ask all of this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening scripture this morning comes from Psalm 24. This is one of my favorite uh, psalms uh, of calling, of, of opening of worship. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessings from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Let us join now in singing, I will enter his gates. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before you, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of eternal gladness, fill us with the light of day. You are the one who saves. You are the one who saves. You are the one whose hands lift from the grave you are the light of light the everlasting day you are the one who takes all our sin away you are giving and forgive never blessing never bless Fountains of the joy of living ocean, depth of happy rest. You are the one who saves, you are 
are the one who saves. You are the one whose hands lift us from the grave. You are the light of light, the everlasting day. You are the one who takes all our sin away. the glory, great things he has done, so lucky the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atoned for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God. The wireless defender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. Great things has taught us great things he has done and great our rejoicing through jesus the son but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder our transport when jesus we see praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear his voice praise the lord praise the lord let the people rejoice so come to the father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. We come to our time of prayer this morning. Uh, be thinking about what God has been doing. Be thinking about the, the needs that you have or needs of the community that you are aware of. As we sing this, this next song, uh, Waymaker, we realize that God is moving in this place, and God is always moving around us. Sometimes we may not be aware of it, but God is always there. Worship you. You are 
Are there prayer requests that you would like to share with us this morning? I know the prayer brochure went out via email and via mail, and uh, so there's a lot in there. So, Ross? Prayers for Jim Gardner, who is in the Salem Hospital with, with liver cancer. Okay. Uh, prayers for him. Yes, Steve. Prayers for Michelle for the healing station of her left shoulder. Good. <laughs> Prayers for, for Steve uh, to lose some, some more weight, uh, stick to the diet. Uh, he's going in for knee surgery uh, again. Uh, this will be your third one? Another full replacement. Okay. Uh, but he's got to lose some weight first uh, to, be, to make that a successful thing. Marsha. Uh, praise for uh, Amaya's report. Uh, for her heart murmur, the, they didn't see anything that was significantly causing the murmur. Uh, so they'll try again in, in another year or so, and hopefully she'll be a little bit more cooperative to, to do the, the procedure, do the scan. Yes. Uh, prayers for blessings for, for your gr current grandchildren and prayers for the ones to come in the next few months. Uh, prayers for mothers and fathers and the whole family uh, in the upbringing of, of those children. So we're, we're glad to pray for those and celebrate the new life. Absolutely. Others, somebody would like to share. Let us go to our Lord in prayer this morning, remembering these and remembering the, the ones on our hearts that we may not have spoken, but God knows and remembering those on our prayer list as well. Let's pray together.
Gracious God, we come as your children, your daughters and your sons, those who seek to follow you and to live a life of faith. We come knowing that you hear us and you welcome us. We come to bring before you the things that weigh our hearts down. Lord, for those who are in need of healing, we lift them before you. We pray, Lord, for those who are battling cancer. Those who are struggling with, with infections. We just hold them before you, Lord, for these and so many other issues that, that our bodies face and battle against. We ask, Lord, for your hand to, uh, to bring healing and strength and comfort in those times where it is needed. We pray, too, Father, for those needs that we have um, in our emotional or mental health. We pray, Lord, for your peace. Lord, we do celebrate the, the new birth. And we also pray for mothers and, and families in the, in the upbringing of these, these children. Lord, we pray for our community. We pray, Lord, for our country. That you will bring us together for the good of, of all people. That you will guide our leaders at, at every level. We pray, Lord, for your spirit to move first among your churches and then out into the communities that we might be signs of light and hope and love and grace to those around us. Lord, we lift before you our church. As we continue to regather and, and restart the different things that we have lost over the last year and a half, we pray, Lord, that you will, will guide us and continue to provide for us. That the excitement of coming back together, the excitement of, of being together, will in, in invigorate us in, in a way that, uh, that we need right now. And Lord, for the many blessings that you have given to us, you know, the blessings of, of, of grandchildren and new birth, the blessings of new beginnings, the blessings of, of health, the blessings of a flower. We ask all of these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning I want to turn our attention to a scripture in, in the Old Testament. Uh, this comes from the, the prophet Isaiah. And for those who, who are familiar with, with the prophets in the Old Testament, Isaiah is, is kind of one of the main prophets, the main one, ma one of the longest books, excuse me. He's called one of the major prophets. And he speaks in a lot of different ways to, to Israel and brings God's word to them. Most of the time, it's not necessarily good news. He's chastising them for their lack of faith, for their lack of obedience, for the way that they treat orphans, widows, aliens, visitors in their land, for their worship of idols, for their worship of, of people, of whatever. I mean, Israel was not perfect by any, any stretch of the imagination. But there are also good news that, that, that Isaiah brings. And this is one of those, those texts where Isaiah reminds the people that he speaks to and I think in a way he reminds us that God continually does new things, that God has not left us, God does not leave us alone, but God does new things in our midst. So hear these words from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 16 to 21. This is what the Lord says, He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. 
forget the former things and do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Just a short few verses that reminds primarily the Israelites and the readers, those who are hearing, about God's faithfulness. And I love how Isaiah brings them into this text. He reminds them of their history. He reminds them that at, when they, long ago, when they came out of Egypt, when Moses led them out of Egypt, one of the first things that God did for them as they came out was to part the waters of the Red Sea to save them from the pursuing Egyptian army. He reminds them of that because that's one of the first signs, first acts of God that showed God was with them. That God was going to protect them in the midst of the wilderness. God was going to provide for their, their very needs as they made this journey from, from Egypt into the promised land. And if you're familiar at all with the story from, from earlier in the Old Testament, they didn't do very well, did they? Even after God parted those waters and led them through the Red Sea, they still struggled with obedience. They still struggled with trusting that God was going to do what God had promised to do. Remember when Moses went up on the mountain the first time? Remember what the Israelites did? What they created? The golden calf. And there was ramifications because of that. And that was just one of the issues, one of the struggles that they had. A lot of times they forgot that God was present, that God had called them, and God was going to be taking care of them. So it, Isaiah here reminds them, and he says these words, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? For me, those are very challenging words. It's easy for me, probably easy for all of us, to dwell in the past in both good and bad ways. Sometimes we'll dwell on the past and say, wow, do you remember how wonderful it was back then? Do you remember the, all the fun that we had way back then? I wish we could go back to those times. I wish we could go back there. Now, it's not bad to remember those things, but maybe go, wanting to go back to them blinds us to what God is doing now. I just returned from, from vacation. I mean, you, you all knew that. Uh, we went to a, a lake that we always go to, or we normally go to, in central Idaho, up in the Sawtooth Mountains. We've been going there since the mid-70s as a family. That's a long time. And we've seen lots of different changes in, uh, in the campgrounds, in the lodge, in, in the, that whole area. And I actually found myself saying, wow, you know, things have changed so much up here. It's become very very crowded compared to what it was. It's become almost very commercialized compared to what it was. I wonder, I wish we could go back to those times. It would seem a little simpler. And then I began to realize, you know what? Yeah, things have changed. And there's a lot of new things. And that may not be bad, but it's different. And that freed me to begin to, once again, as probably I do every year, experience what was going on at that moment. But sometimes we live in the past because of, of tough struggles, of bad things. How often do we make a mistake? We do something wrong. We sin. We, we do something to hurt somebody. Uh, 
and we dwell on it. We keep going back over and over and over again and reliving it. Say, man, I wish I hadn't done that. Man, I, you know, I, this caused so many problems. And we can't let it go. We can't move past it. And it's maybe, maybe not something that we've done, but maybe something that somebody else has done to us. And we dwell on it. And we live there. And it keeps us from moving forward. It keeps us from, from being released from the pain and the anger and, the, and everything else that goes along with it. And when we release it, when we forgive, we are free to go forward. We are free to move forward. I find myself in that, that place sometimes too. Someone's hurt me in a, in a way years and years ago. And I still find myself going back to that saying, what am I going to do with it? Why can't I let this go? Why can't I forgive? Or why can't I fully forgive and let it, just let it go into God's hands? That's a struggle I think probably we all have to some degree at different times in our lives. But I think what Isaiah is saying here is forget the former things. Not, not necessarily forget them and put them out of your memory. But forget them in a way that does not anchor us to those things in the past. Because oftentimes that will keep us blinded to what God is doing now. And that's what he says here. He says, see, I am doing a new thing. It springs up. Do you not perceive it? To me, that's just kind of one of those things like, yeah, sometimes I don't see God, what you're doing, Lee. Sometimes I'm blinded to what is going on that's new around me. Maybe I want to go back to the good old days the golden years, or whatever, you, whatever term you want to apply to it. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm stuck with a hurt or a, a, something that's gone on in the past that I need to let go of uh, that was bad, that I did or somebody else did. Forget the former things. Do you see the things that I'm doing? Do you not see them? Sometimes I think God's, God's kind of slapping you upside the head saying, do you not see them? Come on, Darren. Pay attention to what's going on. Paul talks a little bit about that, too. Because Paul, in his writings, and we're skipping lots of years ahead in Paul's writings, Paul is one of those uh, that we are familiar with. And we look at Paul and we say, you know, Paul came from a very uh, specific background, a very specific way of, of doing things, because he was a Pharisee. And they, they dwelt on things. And he, they looked at the laws as the way in which they were going to change and be saved. But when Paul had his meeting with Jesus, his conversion there on the road to Damascus, he began this, this path of transformation to move beyond the old way of that he understood things, the old way that he did things, to the new creation. In fact, he talks about that in, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse uh, I'm going to read from verse 16 and following. It says, From now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, new creature. He is new. She is new. They are new people. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. This, All this is from God who reconciled to himself, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Paul realizes that when we come to Christ, when we have that, that, that conversion, we become new people. We may still struggle with the old things. We may still struggle with some sin. We may still have our own hang-ups. But we become new creatures, new creations, new men, new women. And our lives are different. It says, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. We're not going to remember, we're not going to hold those things against them from the past. We don't see them as they were. 
we see them as they are now, as new creations. The things of the past may still impact today. The things of the past may still have consequences and ramifications for today. But we are new creations. We are new people in God. And that's not only how we should see ourselves, but how we see others. And part of that is, is learning to forgive, learning to let go, learning to see what God is doing new in our lives, in our family, in our church, in our community. Where is God moving in our midst? Do you not see it? I think as we move forward as a church, we will have lots of opportunities to see what God is doing in our lives, what God is doing in our midst. A couple things, you know, just from even this past week, we had the dental van here on Friday, and one of the, the, the patients brought her husband in with her. Do you remember, remember them? Uh, Nelda was downstairs talking with him, and I just happened to pop downstairs, and, and he started to ask a question about faith and about his, his, uh, his faith. And I had an opportunity to share that with, to share with him. It's a new thing, a new opportunity for us. We have new opportunities to share the gospel, to share God's grace, to share God's welcome to all people, and to welcome them and say, God welcomes you in. We have these new opportunities if we see, if we just open our eyes and see them. But there are blinders we put on. Sometimes they're blinders like racehorses wear, where they go along the side of the head to help focus their eyes. And you can only see certain things. Sometimes they're blinders like this, where we can't see anything. And we walk around uh, stumbling in the dark. Isaiah says, forget the former things of the past. Paul says, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Isaiah says, do not see the, the new things that God is doing. Paul says, we are new creations, created in Christ because of what God is doing to reconcile us, to bring us back into that relationship. So this is, what I, this is my challenge for us this week. I want you to take some time, and I want you to see where you are still holding on to something from the past. Something maybe you've done, maybe something someone's done to you. Maybe you're wishing to go back to whatever event, to whatever time period, and say, I want to go back there. Things would be so much better if I went back there, if I was back there, if it was this time in our history, whatever it was along those lines. I want you to, to specifically say, God, take this. Take this from me. Help me to see what you, God, are doing now in this place. Transitions, new things like that are never easy. Stepping out in faith is never easy. But when we begin to see that what God is doing in our midst, what God is doing not only uh, within us as individuals or as families, but around us in our community, to show love and grace. Then we can join in and we can say, God, I see what you're doing new here. It may start out small. It may start out very small. But it grows. Kind of like a little mustard seed that Jesus talked about. Do you remember that? Little mustard seeds, smallest of all seeds, are probably about that big. But they grow to a mighty, mighty bush, mighty tree. That even the birds rest in. I've got a couple apple trees in my backyard. They probably start out, you know, apple seeds are not much bigger than that. But now they're really big. They need to be trimmed back, but they're really big. But they started from one little seed. That's how new things start. We see the little things God's doing. We see the small things that God is doing anew in our midst. And we decide, you know what, I'm not going to hold on to the stuff in the past. I'm going to move forward, and I'm going to take care of the things that need to be taken care of. I'm going to see the new things that God's doing, and I'm going to join in enthusiastically 
to see what's going to come about. See what God's doing. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we do come this morning knowing that you are a God of today and tomorrow and that you are doing new things within us, making us new creations and calling us then to go out and be new people in your world today. Lord, help us to do that. Let us not be held back by the things of this world. Let us not be held back by the things that you uh, want us to let go of, but to latch on to you and to move freely and purposefully into your new future, into your new grace in all that we do. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we prepare our hearts for communion together this morning, I hope that you picked up your communion set as you walked in. If you didn't, we will be glad to bring you one uh, if you just uh, let us know. But let us begin to sing uh, today, uh, Jesus Loves Me. And I hope you all at least know the tune. The words may be a little different at, at times because there's, a, there's actually a lot of verses to this, this little children's song. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, this I know, as he loved so long ago. Taking children on his knee, saying, let them come to me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me still today, walking with me on my way. Waiting as a friend to give light and love to all who live. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gates to open wide. He will wash away my sin, let the little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Let's go back and sing the first verse. But I want you to change the words a little bit. Instead of Jesus loves me, I want you to sing Jesus loves us. Make it plural. Make it inclusive. Jesus loves us, this we know. For the Bible tells us so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves us. Yes, Jesus loves us. Yes, Jesus loves us. The Bible tells us so.
We come this morning to the communion table. We come to the table not because I or an elder or somebody else invited us. We come this morning because Christ invited us. On his last night on earth, he met with his disciples in the upper room. He met with them and he had a meal with them and he picked up at the end of the meal a loaf of bread. And he said to them, after he blessed them, he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Whenever you eat it, remember me. <coughs> after they had all eaten, he picked up a cup from the table. And he said to them again, after he blessed, he said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, remember me. This is what Christ has given to us because Christ loves us. In fact, early in the Gospel of John, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This meal, this remembrance, is a reminder of God's love for each and every one of us, that we are all welcome to the table, that we are all welcome to come and remember what Christ has done for us, and then to go and live that each day this week by showing love to one another. A few announcements as we as we get ready to conclude this morning. First of all, if you have your offering, uh, you can put it in the box in the back there. As you go out, you can bring it up and put it on the on the table here. Uh, you can give online if you'd like. You just go to our website at, at dallasfirstcc.com. There's a link there to give that. You can also th through the app as well. And we encourage you to give. It's not just not just to keep the church functioning, but to also as a as a sign of worship, all throughout Scripture. We are, we are shown that our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings are given in worship. They're given back to God because of what God has done for us. So we encourage you to do that, to be faithful in your giving. Uh, a couple other announcements uh, to go. Tonight at 6.30, we will have our, our a spe special service of, of remembering, of reawakening, and reigniting. It's a service of regathering. It's kind of a, a re-service tonight. <laughs> Uh, but it will be based upon Joshua 24, where Joshua gathers the Israelites together uh, after they had come into the Holy Land and recommits them to what God had called them to do and called them to be. And so just a way for us to come together as the church to, to kind of follow that, that pattern. This Thursday, we're, we're starting our men's Bible study at 8.30 in the morning here, uh, here at the church. We'll be in the parlor there. We encourage you to come, uh, men, and be a part of that if you can. It, it's a fun time, about an hour, hour and a half or so. And uh, we, we just enjoy being together. We miss being together. Also, uh, if you have youth and would like to send them to a summer camp type experience in Hood River, uh, middle school and high school, there's some information on, that will be on the screen about that. Uh, and it's in the, the family visitor newsletter as well. And if you have any questions, you can ask me. It, it's the first part of August as well. Uh, today is also our, our food bank day, our, our fill our cart. And I can see a lot of food back there in the cart, and we'll, if you like to bring it during the week too, or bring it tonight, we will have that available, and we'll take it in, uh, uh, excuse me, we'll take it in later this week. It's a great ministry, a great way to reach out to the, to the community here in Dallas. Marsha, have I missed any announcements? New, new prayer brochures in the back, if you'd like to pick up a hard copy of that, it also went out in, in the email, and via, uh, Snail mail, too, for, to some people. But there are hard copies in the back there. Yeah, Bonnie. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, well, let's, let's talk about it afterwards, because I, I, I don't know. So that's a good question. So <laughs> let's close this morning. With, with a song that, that helps us to, to go forward from this place. A song that talks about uh, God and his power, God and, and all that, that God does for us. Uh, our, our God is greater, and we serve a great, powerful, awesome, almighty God. And God takes care of us, 
God blesses us. God calls us to be God's people in the world today. Would you join in singing our closing song? new creations in God, being transformed and made new each and every day to see the new things that God is doing, not only within you, but around you and through you. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>